when Ornipo and Airways first asked me to take on this project, I was really excited because it is such a big challenge. You know, putting together a menu or a number of menus that's going to be served in an aircraft is not the easiest thing to do in food, but it's a, it's a fantastic challenge. I kind of fell in love with the food of Japan when I moved to Japan when I was in my early 20s. and I. I took a job over in Tokyo and I had intended to be in Japan for about 18 months. In the end, I ended up staying there for nearly 10 years. So uh, there was certainly something about Japan that, that stuck with me. I've been flying All Nippon Airways for decades now. When I was based in Tokyo, I used to always fly with All Nippon Airways through all of my business trips going around Asia and also to the US as well. Then in 2016, the Japanese government uh, bestowed on me quite a, a, a nice honour. They made me a, a culinary ambassador for Japanese food abroad, which was a, a real honour at that time because I think there's only about 25 in the world and, and only half of us are based outside of Japan. So I was very excited to be doing that and now ANA asked me to be their culinary ambassador for the route between Sydney and Tokyo and I'm extremely proud to be doing that. For any ancient cuisine, and Japanese food is quite an ancient cuisine, it's been around for thousands of years. There's so much culture that's incorporated into the food that you eat and also the, that, that comes back from the food into um, the way people live their lives, the way people go grocery shopping, the way people celebrate birthdays or the hundred days of uh, a child after a child's birth. There's all these foods and, and different cultural touchstones that are almost hidden in between the ordinary tasks of eating breakfast, lunch and dinner, which I find absolutely fascinating. I worked a lot with the, the chefs here in Sydney to work out what we could do on the plane and there was, actually it's a bit of a surprise for me, so much that was available to us that we, we could do any type of food that we wanted and essentially, basically the sky's the limit. But the one thing that really surprised me was how involved All Open Airways was in that process. It wasn't just me presenting the menu and, and shaking hands and saying thanks, thanks for coming. We had a number of times when people were coming over from head office and regional offices around Asia coming in to sample the menus, giving feedback, uh, excellent feedback that we were able to take on board and then um, doing multiple iterations of the menu to make sure that by the time it actually gets to the guest and to the customer it was exactly right and I, I love that process. I think um, that collaborative process of working with a and chefs and working with the a and management as well has been really rewarding. Being on an aircraft that's coming from Australia, we wanted to make sure that there was a sense of Australia in, in that meal as well. So we've chosen some unique Australian ingredients, uh, native wattle seed, which when roasted and, and ground is, is mixed with our young chicken and uh, sesame salad. The, the wattle seed has an almost kind of chocolatey coffee flavor to it that I think really works fantastically. We've made a milk from macadamia nuts and blended that through and set that into a sweet jelly that, that's come up really, really nicely with some uh, fresh Australian fruits and also goji berries. Each of the four different menus that we've developed uh, are really, I think, quite special. The business class menus have a huge number of elements, more than 30 elements. The, the centerpiece of, of our summer menu for business class being a beef short rib that's being braised in a sweet soy sauce and Australian whiskey that has come up incredibly well. And our autumn menu is a piece of salmon that's been marinated first in shiokoji, a type of fermented rice and also porcini mushroom that's then baked in sake butter and a variety of different other Japanese mushrooms which has come up amazingly well. For passengers flying in economy, they don't miss out either. They've got a couple of my favourite dishes. The first is a taco rice from Okinawa, which is made with beef brisket. And we've slowly braised that in smoked paprika, oregano, and also uh, some garlic as well. A bit of cumin. Uh, so it's really nice and fragrant, and we've served that with lovely melted cheese and a, a few vegetables as well. The other dish that we've got for economy class passengers is in Japanese, san iro tori soboro, which is kind of a three color coarsely minced chicken. It's glazed in a, a rich teriyaki glaze and then also served with, with crumbled egg that's been cooked in sesame oil and also some lightly fried green beans as well. The launch event was amazing to see so many people come along uh, for us to present what we've been working on for so long. Um, they had a chance to experience the meal that people will eat when they get on the plane. They had a chance to drink some of the Nihonshu that you'll get on the plane. And we even had uh, the flight attendants come over to show people exactly the kind of hospitality that they'll be experiencing on this flight. 
We were certainly big shoes to fill because a and A is Japan's only five-star Skytrax rated airline, so the quality of what you get when you actually step foot on the plane is absolutely incredible. I'm really proud of this project. It's something that we've now been working on for, for nearly a year, and um, to see these dishes come from something that were just ideas that we were talking around a table about, to, to things that are now being able to get into uh, the kitchen and cook and be served to 300 people every single day flying from Sydney to Tokyo. It's a fantastic thing to see and I, I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I've enjoyed the process of putting it together.